in the oven. The oven. The oven's preheated, baby. It sure is. We got our boy over here to my left. He's been covering the NBA since he's 18 years old. Now site manager for the Nets Daily Crew. The best dressed reporter in the game, <laughs> Anthony Puccio. Thank you for coming, brother. Uh, Thanks for coming. I appreciate it. Thanks for this having is, me on, guys. This has been a long time coming, man. We go a long, a long ways back, so this is a little. This is a nice full circle uh, episode for the oven. Mario, tell us a little about the oven, my man. I'm Mario. That's my Croatian co-host, Franco, <laughs> a.k.a. Papa Fazul. Papa. We're the Oven Podcast. Don't forget, <laughs> follow us on all socials. Keep sharing the show and spank that subscribe button. Anthony, I'm jumping right into it. I want to know your thoughts on the current situation, the lack of hype, or, I mean, fake hype, around the joke that they call the WNBA. I want to know your take on the WNBA, how you feel about it. They want increased salaries. They want better traveling accommodations. They lose men money every year. Oh. How do you feel about the WNBA and what they bring to the table? They want more more money in their media rights deal right now, and it's 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 complicated because right now the WNBA was not expecting to be in the position that they're in with Caitlin Clark and Angel Reese. Their revenue has gone up, right? But considerably, um, you look at their past. Obviously, as you mentioned, losing money, having to kind of bank on the NBA to survive. Now they're in a position where they actually are staying afloat. But they were not ready for any of this. So, like, you see, like, chartered flights, they were not able to even get that until this past year. In the past, any team that had a chartered flight, it was considered cheating. Like, they really, the, the Liberty got fined for chartering flights for their players right, because they baby. thought it was a competitive advantage, right? So, wow. That's, that shows how far back that they were, right? How, how far set back they were. And, and their commissioner even said that. They they were not they were not prepared for this hype that they have right now right. Um, they're trying to establish something similar to to Magic and Larry with um, Angel Reese and Caitlin Clark. I, which, I love I love that comparison. I was actually like looking for who you can compare these two to, but it's not like a it's not like a Jordan Lebron scene. It's exactly like you said. It's it's only that that's like the perfect way to put it. Right. My thing is that what I don't like about that is, is, is you're forcing an agenda, right? Let the play do the talking, right? And, and right now well, they're they doing they, they have this golden opportunity right now, and they're trying to run with it right. because they're, they're, they're starving for some hype around the league right. to finally not be in a deficit. Right. You know, they saw an opportunity, and they're really trying to run with it. So you 100%. can't blame them for that. No, absolutely not. It's just I want to see them show it on the court and also – Something that I just think about is, like, you, you look at Twitter discourse, you look at Instagram discourse, and you, you pin a black player against a white player, mm -hmm. and you see people just hating on each player when – sit back and enjoy the game, man. Like, right. enjoy, enjoy these like, two players. Yeah, it's like that's the, that's the, that's the headlines you want. Like, you, right. got, you have a prime, like, opportunity here to really sell some, you know, Caitlin Clark, Angel Reese, and you're pinning them together. Man, how about you bring the lead together and bring the face Asia Wilson – Right. No, bring Kelsey right. Plum, bring right. all these girls together and put these girls on a pedestal, man. Put these women yeah. on a pedestal. You know, it's for me, it's just like it's almost disgusting, like what the media does. And we're part of the media, you know, and it right. sucks. But like for me, I would never be pushing that agenda of these girls hating on each other. You know, they, they look good in the WNBA game when they when the, the All Stars versus uh, Team USA. Right. Yeah. I mean, they beat Team USA by eight points. You know, it's for me, you know, it, it's almost. Disgusting to watch what these guys are at doing. a time when society is polarized enough. Yeah. Right. Um, but right. again, the media feeds off this. You have to create storylines. You have to make money. Like you said, they need revenue, and right now yep. they're banking on those two to really not just revitalize the game, but actually build the game the same way that Bird and Magic did. Who you th who you think wins Rookie of the Year? I think Caitlin Clark is going to win. Right. I mean, I, I I don't see how she doesn't, especially now that she's she's kind of going off. First, tri first triple double as a rookie in yeah. NBA in WNBA yeah. history. That's kind of wild, dude. And she was getting her ass kicked early. Like they she were, was, they were, dude. They were battering her. She down. was, and they they were welcoming her to the league. Absolutely, like yeah. that's. But but they they fucking welcomed her, man. Like, and, and, and it, she wore it. That's how it. That's how it should be. Yeah, though. Look, I, like yeah. like Rook, you got you got this hype. The same way that they get hazed in the locker room and shit like that in the NBA. Like, yep. nah, like you're gonna get a hard foul. And 
I, I respect the product. Like, yeah. I, I'm yeah. cool with it. I was always cool with it. I mean, even when it was Angel Reese that came down hard, you're like, damn, you're just, like, you're just getting in the league too. Come on. You smoke? Can you do that? Yeah. yeah? Can you do that? <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> so speaking of Magic and Larry, I want to know if you can go back in time and live your life in any other time period than the one right now, yeah. which time period would you pick? NBA related? Sports related? Any, anything, whatever comes to your mind. Ooh, anything. Any time period in history. <sighs> Listen, you, you, you brought it back to Magic and Larry. You got it going, so I'm running with it. If I, if I had to pick a time period to live in just my life, like the yeah. 60s and 70s Woodstock era. Yeah. I was but, literally just thinking the same right? exact thing. Uh, damn. That was I feel like so I've been funny. living in the Woodstock like era anyway. Pick one. <laughs> I, <laughs> I, know. I feel like you got to pick one, 60s or 70s. I would go 70s. Late sixties, late 60s. right when Woodstock, <laughs> right, right when Woodstock was hitting, man, like ooh, that LSD must have been tasting good <laughs> in Woodstock. <laughs> like you see, you see those videos and stuff, man. I, I mean, you, now they had like uh, Travis Scott just had that huge concert. Yeah. I mean, and that yeah. when Woodstock blew that out of the yeah. water, nuts. What are you picking? I'm seventies. Seventies, yeah. I'm 70s. a seventies too. Yeah, 70s. absolutely. I, I feel like everyone was just so happy in the seventies. Yeah, the, the, for me, for me, it's like the disco. I got all the chest hair. I got the curl. I got, <laughs> I got the curls in the back. Okay. Uh, you got waves, dude. The vowel at the end of my name and the gold chain. I would have been running the disco. So I would have been be eleven disco. out of ten. You'd be a disco. Instead disco seventies. Yeah. Would you be a hippie disco. Or I'd be a hippie. You'd be a hippie. Yeah. Yeah. The chest hair popping up. Yeah. He, he is a hippie. <laughs> yeah, you're right. Like he said. He's I just don't. I just, I just don't wear the hippie clothes. I just. <laughs> I do everything that the prototypical hippie does, just in regular human clothes. And just so you guys know, side note, we have the event at Ohika Castle. Uh, next uh, August fourth, and it's the one eight hundred liquors D up cancer. Yep, D up on cancer. Uh, August fourth and fifth, and Franco is being styled for that weekend. Yeah, and man. I couldn't tell you guys how <laughs> much joy that brings me if I could choose one friend that I really, really, really wanted to not have to dress himself. It's this fucking bum right there. <laughs> but go on. Fuck. That's you. all I will say about that. Esther Lamore is about to style me up. Thank I you, Esther. Wait. I cannot wait. She's sending me over some nice tuxes. We're meeting in the city next week, but Ohika Castle next weekend. Ooh, it's going to be a show. Who's the most famous contact in your phone right now? I knew you were going to do that. That's a good, very good question. I would say Mark Cuban. Wow. Marky Mark. Where would you, yeah. put, where would you put him on the, on the list of um, Shark Tank hosts? Like one to five. Like my like I my number one, you gotta be. I don't, I don't really no? watch. Shark no, you watch Shark Tank? no. I know I know Mark through through Netflix yeah, yeah, yeah. And yeah. Mavericks. Yeah, I don't really watch it too much. How, so how did you guys end up uh, like uh, getting uh, so close and exchanging numbers? That was that was one of the first real big celebrities I ever spoke to. Like I was, I think I was like 19 years old. It was a photographer. His name was Gemini's Keys. He was he was a freelancer. He didn't make a lot of money. And he was always a good role model for me. He always pushed me to kind of do things that were out of my comfort zone. Again, I, I, I didn't know. You step into it, you know how to write maybe. You, you, you know about ball, but you, you don't realize that, yeah, Mark Cuban owns his team, right? Like Mark Lazary owns the Bucks, and Bill Clinton is sitting right there courtside, right? So I see Cube sitting there, and, and my boy Gemini Keys hits me up, and he's like, bro, like, just, like, just go talk to him, right? Like, just, 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 just go. I'll get a shot at you, right? So... It was the first picture I ever got. My family, everybody was hyped up. I, I, I remember I sat down, and I was like, I got a couple tips for you to be successful. And he looked at me like, what the fuck? <laughs> <laughs> like, like, and, and I, He's I, like, I'm I, interested. I, yeah, and, and, and I sat, and he, he looked at me like I was crazy. Like, I had 10 heads, and I was like, I'm just, I'm just messing around, Mark. I just want to introduce myself. And, you know, at that time, again, you're a college student. You yeah. really know, like. That was a good opening, yeah, bro. I like opening. that. That was good. It's, it, it's. What you learn about meeting these people, especially the Cubans of the world, like the Bill Clintons of the world, like these, not just superstar athletes, but these people that are beyond the realm, the one percenters, like the Michael Rubens of the world, is that ultimately at the end of the day, like they're still human beings too, and oh, yeah. they like they they're not here for that small talk. They don't want they don't want their 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 beak being wet by every single person that already does that. They want to laugh. They want to have a good time. So that was always my approach, and I took that at 19 years old and was like. Fuck it. I'm going to run with this style with everybody that I talk to because this is who I am. Like, this is how I act with my boys. This is how yeah, I act man. with you guys. That's I talk it. to you guys. And that's how I took it into my professional world. So 
it's hard at first. You get you get that goosebumps, but once you get through that first one, it's like it's like doing a cold plunge. Once you get in that bitch, you you will be fine yep. doing that yep. going forward. That's Absolutely. it. Absolutely, I love that, bro. So you know, you're around celebrities. You're around again these one percenters. Yeah, we're three Levittown guys sitting right here, right? Yeah. So. What do you have to say to that small town kid or that suburban kid who, who thinks that, you, you know, they can't do something special with their life? They can't do something different. You know, they can't have these opportunities. What would you say to them? Get off the island, first of all. <laughs> get, get, yeah. no, and not move. Get, get, get some experience. Learn different cultures. Go, go watch an AAU streetball game. Really. Go, sit, go, in, go in Lincoln Park and, and Queens or go in Brooklyn and, and watch a game in the projects and really learn different cultures. Learn different types of people out there, right? So that you can understand their side, your side, and you could kind of come to a middle ground so that you you balance yourself. After that, if you want something, you really got to ask yourself, like, some people want it, some people need it. Some people want to be average or okay with being average. Some people want to be good and some people want to be fucking great. And if you want to be great, you have got to do whatever it takes. So for me, my personal experience was very extensive. My, 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 my house was getting evicted, my father was sick, it was something that not only that I have to go and, like, I wanted to go chase that dream that I had since I was five years old, but I had no other choice. So any kid that I would talk to around here, right, it would, it would just be if you want it or if you need it. That's it. And so, sometimes it's as simple as that. And then once you go, don't stop. That's it, brother. It's all about just staying consistent in this world now, you know, especially for us, the blue-collar workers over here. It's uh, it's not. It's cool to be sitting here like this, though. You know, having these conversations. But it's awesome that you were able to rise to the occasion yeah. and realize that you, you know, you you had to make something happen, and now look yeah. where you are. So that's that's awesome. Good my, for you. It, my circumstances may be a little bit different, right? You you get thrown into a situation where, like I said, you you have to do it for your family. People are counting on you, and you have. I think that's but some the people advice. crumble in that situation, and you didn't right. though. Yeah, well, man. pressure makes diamonds, man, and yeah. that's what I would tell people. Pressure again. is a privilege. Yes, that's it. Yes. So I mean, look, not everyone is going to live in that type of circumstance, right? You know, my whole life, my biggest struggles were documented on HBO for the for the whole world to see. Yep. It was something that I had to grow with and and use as motivation. For these kids, whether again they're in a tough circumstance or whatever it might be, it's go get it and keep. At it like you are not you're not gonna get paid at first. You, you, I would I didn't get paid for three four years like, but I kept doing it. I took out an extra college loan just so I could afford to get on the train. I went to all 41 games when I got my credentials for the Nets. Hell yeah! Plus preseason, plus practices when I wasn't at school. You do those things. You tell yourself again: Do I do I want it or do I need it? And Again, once you get your foot in that door, you're no longer knocking. You're in that, you're in that yeah. room. You're with those one percenters. You're with those athletes. You have that opportunity. You better go seize it. And that's a sweet spot, too, when you want it just as bad as you need it. Yeah. You know? That, that's, that. And, people, and people notice, right. man. Like, people notice that. Yeah. People notice you showing up. Yeah. People see you consistently coming in, and they're like, all right, we need, to, like, we need to know who this guy is. And then once they know you, they bring you right in. Right, and you even introduced me as the the best dressed, and I think I think maybe you should get your eyes checked. But no, <laughs> no, no. Come on, you got the Ricky jersey yeah. on, bro. But but you know, it's, it's something in Brooklyn that's become kind of an mo is that I always wore a suit. It was something my father taught me, my my grandfather taught me. They were on Wall Street, and it was always like, nah, you show and yep. and, and you show professionalism, but not only that, stick out a little bit. Use use a little bit of your own flair. Like, your own personality with that professionalism. Absolutely. You see, you, with your gold chains out, floral shirt, you know what I'm talking about. Yeah. He's no, got the, he's got the, he's got the I'm, birds I'm on. Guy. I'm, yeah, no, <laughs> no, 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 I'm not dissing you. I'm yeah. saying. No, yeah, absolutely. We all, we all have our, our style, but, like, 100%. how do you make that impression, right? You're sitting on a podcast right now. You're looking into this camera. You as well. You want to make an impression. You want to look good. I'm wearing a Ricky Henderson jersey. Shit, Wait. I want to look good on the open pod, man. That's it, baby. So when you show up to these games, it's not just, it's not just the people that you work with or – you know, the security guards, it's, it's the players. You know, I, I got to a point where I had a brown suit. Damari Cowell came up to me and said, man, he starts feeling it. He's, he's like, shit. And Damari Cowell was one of the best-dressed players in all of the NBA. He took great pride. And he says, yo, what color is this, bro? Like, I'm about to cop this. Like, where did, where did you get this? Like, I think this is a rust. And he's going through all these different types of browns. I'm like, all right, like, 
now I'm going to show you up every game. And at the end of that year, he, he and I did a contest. He tweeted it out, his suit versus mine. And Nets fans and, and NBA fans chimed in who they liked more. So I think that first impression and how you dress, how you act, how you conduct yourself, there are millions of people that want to do what you want to do and what you dream of. But how can you stick out? Other than making your content good and your actual work good, how can you stick out? And separate yourself from the rest of the pack, and that part of that is absolutely how you dress. Yeah, I I agree with that. I'll bring it back to college. One moment, my roommate from college, DJ, told me you can never be overdressed or overpaid, and I never forgot that. That's the yeah, truth. Dunk. It really is. <laughs> That's the truth. <laughs> truth. So you talked about getting away from Long Island, but yeah. I want to bring it back to Long Island for a second. A lot of these smaller networks. They can't compete with the big guys like ESPN, right? Yep. Right. So, how do how do we bring back some growth to the local uh, networks here and to keep the Long Island hype and Long Island based athletes and news soaring in a way that allows the local networks to grow and maybe not ever compete with ESPN, but make a name for themselves. When you when you mention Long Island, I think of Newsday right away. I think of a local newspaper like that, Newsday, yeah. and how it trickles down to all the smaller papers that are covering our towns, right? Um, right now, not just in sports media, but in media in general, we're having a problem where local journalism is getting misconstrued with what I think is PR, right? So when we talk about sports journalism, media, you're... What's happening is a monopolization, right? You see woes of ESPN breaking every news story in 2024 for the NBA. Yo, everything. And it's, and it's, it's no discredit <laughs> yeah, yeah. to him. Adam Schefter, NFL, no discredit to him. A Long Island boy right there. Yep. Jeff Passan, ESPN, MLB. Again, no disrespect to these guys. They put in the work. They got to where they are for a reason. But we misconstrue the idea and the power of social media because these agents and these managers that are leaking these things that have their narratives or agendas, they don't, they don't just want, they don't want Newsday behind a paywall or people that aren't ordering print paper anymore yep. to break the story because they have an account, they have a whole system through ESPN where they televise their games, where they do everything, where they say, nah, we're going to let Woes drop that bomb, right? And instead of some Long Islander seeing it or people that might or might not even get the paper, maybe yeah. hear about it, versus them making sure they get as many clicks and clout as, as much as they can. I and mean, how do you do that? You, you monopolize an ESPN. And that goes against everything that journalism and media is about, right? Exactly. And I, I'm not trying to get all philosophical with you guys, but Pulitzer did say, like, our, our media and its republic rises and falls together, and right now, it's in bad <laughs> shape, dog. And look at the state of, you know, where we're at right now. It's a very, very confusing time where you don't know what to trust. You need Dude. local journalism. Right. You yeah. need people that are on the ground in sports. Like, got, like local journalists cannot even get in the locker room sometimes. So how are you going to get that interview? How are you going to get that source? How are you going to build those relationships, right? Yep. You can't. No, but, you just say but, it's simple. You can't. Right. But we'll, we'll lay the red carpet down for anybody that works at an ESPN type. I can't even, I can't even think of another network. Like, I, I, that's what's crazy. And it's not, again, to d diminish anybody that works there, but more so a uh, microcosm of a bigger issue that we have in journalism in general. No, I'm happy we have, like, a space that we could talk about it at, too. You it's, know? It's crazy. It's, it's crazy. It's, it, it really is a problem. I mean, ESPN, you know, I don't want to – go off what we were talking about, but ESPN right now is going to have an absolute field day, you know, with, with Bronny, right? That was like, to me, listen, I want this kid to succeed more than, more than, more than the next guy, yeah. you know? But it seemed like to me, like, he just didn't earn his stripes, you know? It's, I don't know if he deserved that contract right off the bat. I think maybe he should have went back to USC for a year, grow a little bit, but, you know, he... ESPN, I feel like, is going to push that narrative moving forward. They have someone to cover for the next, you know, 10 years now. Right. With the, with the, the name James on their back. 
ESPN and all the social media accounts that know they're going to get clicks and make. That's the only way that journalism and media makes money today is by getting clicks mm -hmm. if you're utilizing those platforms. Mm -hmm. So yeah. you knew they were going to run with Bronny. You know that everybody's going to run with Bronny. But yep. it, again, it, it, it's a smaller issue to something that's, that's bigger than just Bronny. He's a perfect example of just the era we live in of highlights versus... Uh, actual like product right yep. like execution uh, who your father is this is a very 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 unique case right like but for the nba i look at this i was at the draft and i was waiting i was at the first round first night at barclay center and i'm waiting for his name to be called because i'm thinking to myself if this is a real product this the nba wants me to take them serious as a fan as somebody who loves this game of basketball before they love the nba like if i'm an uh, if i'm another team and I know that LeBron is going to go wherever his son is going to go. If I'm not taking Bronny, then I'm at least telling the Lakers, send me five first-round picks. Something. Because he, yeah, because that's, what, that's the plug right there. So it's, didn't they – so I heard something. This could, be, you know, this could be fake news. But I heard something about they were contacting every team saying, other than Arizona? Uh, the, uh, no, Phoenix. Yeah, other than Phoenix. So other than Phoenix, they said – if you draft Bronny, we're going to go play in Australia. Is, I, I don't know if you heard that, but, like, isn't that in itself? <laughs> like, whether, whether it's true or not, it's, it's all – it's like the yeah. fact that there were repercussions and this, this pressure on other NBA teams to not draft this kid. Because of LeBron, one, like, obviously the NBA wants him to stay in, in La La Land and everything like that. But two, yes, to your point, like, bro, average four point two points per game at yeah, like, come on, at man. USC. Like, <laughs> I mean, let's let's get real about this situation. Like, right. are we are we actually taking our game serious? Is the game what's important, or is it something more than that? Right now, Go back to clicks. It's back to clicks. Yeah, and LeBron gets to accomplish something nobody else has ever done in the NBA. He gets to play with his son. It's a dope storyline. It's something that ESPN will be talking about every single day, yep. no matter what he does, if he claps on the sidelines. I mean, I saw it with Tananis Atenacumpo in Milwaukee with Giannis, too. Like, this is a similar situation in the sense that there are a bunch of guys busting their ass that yep. should have his spot, but because he's Giannis's brother, he's going he's gonna to be on this team. And look, yeah, he, he's on the sideline. He, he's his hype man. He makes the superstar feel comfortable, but... Again, if you want me to take the game serious, there there are millions of guys out there competing in, in the G League overseas, yeah. something. And, and you have, just off of this conversation alone, you have two guys that are taking millions and millions, generational money yeah. from people. Exactly. That are working and busting their ass from nothing just because they don't have that opportunity. So I think, just to wrap this up, like, I, I've been kind of disgusted with this Bronny situation, but I kind of feel bad for the kid at the same time because he yeah. didn't he didn't choose to be in the situation. Like he was born as LeBron James's son, he played ball. Like he he the kid had a like a heart attack a year ago. Like this pressure, this it's a lot, man. These shoes to fill. That's it's not big, fair. It's a big shadow. It's not a fair big for him. Shadow. And I don't think he's ready on the court. I don't think he's. I mean, I don't know him as a person, so I can't speak for him or anybody that knows him, but I don't know if he's ready to be playing with big league players and be an adult yet, and that's the problem. You're not just hurting the game and, and setting a precedent, but you're, you're putting a kid in a, in a situation that he's probably not ready for. And he's a kid. You're setting him up for <laughs> him. Yeah. 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 I mean, again, like I said, you, you hope to see him you know, sustain – and build off of you know each year, but you never know. Or underperform and get the fuck out and make room for the next guy, like right. you said. Right. I, I I was at the draft. I wish that he went undrafted so that 60 kids that were probably more deserving than him got drafted. And then, you know what? You want to sign him to a, a summer league deal, right, or a G League deal yeah. or something along those lines and on a prove-it type of contract. I could respect this situation a whole lot more. But the fact that he takes opportunity away because of who his father is, is very disheartening not only 
for this kid himself, but for the game of basketball. Like, what, it what are we the doing? Game. It yeah, undermines like, the game. Yeah. In the same way how, it, it, you know, these, this is all kind of like game-ish. The same way the, the superstars join forces and join a team. Right. You know, it's right. like they're doing things behind the scenes and kind of like twisting the layout of the game. Yeah. You know, and it's like, how do you feel about that? Well, we always, we, we laughed at when they said, you know, the script with the NFL and no, there's not a, a specific script yeah. that there is, but. If you believe that, you're. <laughs> right, right, right. <laughs> like, come There on. are priorities they're pushing for sure. Right. It's not to be conspiracy or cynical. It's more so to say like, nah, the second that they knew Bronny was going to USC even before them, this has been planted. Le- Le- LeBron was going to play with his son. Like, yeah. And again, it's not to say there's a script, but more so the NBA and these sports, these these leagues, they know what they're doing. If if you watch uh, what the boys, I think I think about a lot of these leagues, like Vaught. I see. I see. So I so I've only watched the, se- the first is that, season. Is that a crazy thing? So you it, it's, I've only watched the first season, but I I know about all this. You see, they're they're doing a prequel. They come out with a prequel for it. They did. Can oh, the two. It, no, 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 like another, another one. one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It just came out today. Give me all. <laughs> Give me all. It's very interesting how they make it existential, though. And sports idea is just that they know who they want their next one to be, and that's good. You have to prepare, right? The WNBA. We started with that. They know that Caitlin Clark and Angel Reese are going to be their next storyline, so they're going to pump them up and do whatever they can. They know in the WNBA, Wemby just entered the league. They need a new face because LeBron is leaving, and he drives those clicks, right? Him so and you, Steph Curry. So you think Wemby over Anthony Edwards? I'm a big Anthony Edwards guy, I got to say. I, I love the way he plays. I love Anthony Edwards. I, he's probably my favorite player to watch in the NBA yep. right now. I think that Wemby is just a freak of nature that sure is. is in the right situation. He's in San Antonio where they're going to develop and rebuild and build around him nonetheless but my issue with Anthony Edwards again is the media discourse around it like yo it's fun to watch this guy go in the lane and bunk the ball on somebody and actually have fire and heart and love for the game versus the highlights yep. but now we're comparing him to Michael Jordan so it, it like exactly what is right everything away. down bro it's like it's weeks and weeks of this it's like I want to enjoy this guy's game not like I enjoy him in the media too I, he, I love that he's like he speaks like he wants to see he says what he wants to say He's he, he, he's himself. He's real and he's funny. Like he's yeah. funny. Like he he has the potential to be the face. But they will they will push people away from rooting for him if they continue pushing this MJ narrative and things that he's not. Like he's Anthony Edwards. He's exactly Ant, not MJ. Like mm-hmm. so. My answer to your question it's I think it's I don't think it's gonna be Wemby or Ant. I think it's gonna be somebody else that we're not. We're not interested right now. I think okay. they're waiting for that guy. Okay. I'm going to jump it. away from bowl for a second. I'm going to hit you with a random mini oven type question right now. We've got three Italians on here. I feel yeah. like this, this is a good one. Yeah. I want to know what is the proper pizza etiquette. We're splitting a pie right now. Do I have to take the slice that's closest to me? Tell me right mm-hmm. now. Can I reach over and take that one slice on Franco's side that looks good? You gotta, you gotta make a real case for why you went over that that box. I completely, I size. completely agree. Yeah, you, you put your hand on your, on my side of the box, right? So you, et, the, the drug, proper yeah. pizza etiquette is to take the slice closest to you. Yeah, yeah. but again, if, if if you're if you're like I, I could only eat corner Sicilian slices, like okay. I, 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 that, and that, you're in that middle. You're a corner guy too. A, I'm like I'm the crust, but like middle crust. I don't okay. need the corner. Too much crust. You know how I feel about crust. Sometimes crust for, <laughs> crust for me, dude, is not like when when I eat the personal pizza, I eat the middle of the pizza, and then I focus on the crust after if I'm still hungry. It just makes no sense not to to eat all that crust. It's not the best part of the pizza. Sometimes you need the the crust to get the uh, the plaque off your teeth. I use this as my plaque remover. What the? I'm fuck kidding. I totally made that up. <laughs> <laughs> like, that threw you for a loop. Yeah, I'm thinking. I'm like, I'm I've never seen you fucking do that. But honestly, I'll stick to the proper. Like, I'll take the slice on my side, unless no one's looking. I'm def. If I see a slice, I like on the other side. I'm, I'm, I'm pulling apart, and I'm taking that one, even if it's not the next one. Well, what if there's meatball on the other side and it's plain? On the no, other I'm talking side. about the, the same, same, all the same slices. Yeah, no. 
You 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 got to come up with a good reason. Okay. Okay. Before Frank go hit you with the final question, tell everyone where they can find you. A Pooch on Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, NetsDaily.com for my written work. Um, I'm kind of I'm coming out with my own basketball podcast, NBA called the Brooklyn. So nice. Check us check us out there. Love it. Awesome. Love it. First announcement right here. On the oh, I love it. We're gonna blow that That's shit up, man. News. That's some good that. stuff right here, bro. Yeah. I love that, man. Thanks. I got so I actually got two you questions it for us, me. huh? Yeah, I'm honored. Yeah. No, I, no I got I got two questions for you. Sure. I want to know your top three basketball movies. In order, love and basketball. Okay. One. I, f- I feel like you. I, I I had a feeling you were gonna say that. Now I'm gonna ask both of you guys. Does uncut Does uncut gems count? Mm. No. Mm. I would say no. I no? would. I would say, say no. Yeah, I would say no. Say it's no. not like. Uh, that's a fuck. That's a good case. You that's drive a good, a good case. That's a good. I I think it is. But Un, uncommon. If it was opinion. a good movie, maybe I would have let it slide. Oh, wow, <laughs> I was just an uncommon opinion. I'm not a big fan. <laughs> wow, <laughs> that's a rare wow. a rare agreement wow, you just saw dude. right there. Okay, okay. Jay, come on. Man. Uh, I well, I love him, but uh, still, it's you know Adam Sandler's got. Just stick to the funny, dude. It's like don't don't push Spanglish on me. I don't fucking want it. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, I hear you. It's fair. It's fair. Cool. Fair assessment. Stick to your genre. All right. Yeah. All right. So uncut gems doesn't count. Doesn't, doesn't count. count. Doesn't count. It's an oven rule. And and, and hated by the oven too. It's getting burnt, <laughs> burnt and taken out. Not even. As, as, we, as we speak, you can't eat that. Baby. <laughs> uh, I would probably say Coach Carter, two A, Hoosiers, like two B. Two B. Okay. I love those two movies. Coach Carter has the best soundtrack. Maybe maybe to any. Movie ever, I agree. like well, Twister and Faith Evans. Hope, I know every word to that. I can rap every word to that. I'm gonna drive home after this, and I'm gonna put that. On. I'm gonna f- blast that going down. Going I'm down driving with you after this. Do not fucking put that on. <laughs> <laughs> play. Let the drummer kick. Yeah, I'll, I'll open the door. Yep. <laughs> what's your number three? You said a two A, two B. So I'll give. You, what's what's the what's the three? It's tough. We can't we we can't say the last dance is a movie, right? No, no. I mean, that that's probably one of the best ever, but we can't say movie. That, that, that would be more like a documentary. That's tough. That, that, that. After that, I think I think it gets cut off. You have you have. Oh, oh dude, Sp- Space Jam. Space Jam, my yeah, number what one. Am I thinking about? All right, Space Jam. Yeah, that's, Spa- your so that's, that's your number yeah. three. That would be my number. Okay, three there for you sure. go. So that's I my mean, number one. You want you want to, you want to know where LeBron is way behind Jordan oh, in Space Jam? Oh yeah, I mean oh, nothing my like God. the original, dude. It's it's tough to make it to make or to remake yeah. a movie like that. But my number three, so my number one is Coach Carter. My number two is Space Jam. My number three, White Man Can't Jump. That's okay. another one I'm forgetting. You know, they they're all somewhere in that two A two B. Yeah, two all, two all two wrapped B. in the middle. Yeah, for me, it's Space Jam, Like Mike number two. Oh, and then dude. number three, I got uh, that's Glory Road. A, that's a, oh. Yo, Like Mike with T. Yo, T. Time. I think you came in. Body slammed us right there, yeah. Dude, boy, yeah. the like Mike. Wow, God bless. I, I, I was waiting for him to say Air Bud, but <laughs> <laughs> Yo, dog, don't, 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 don't make jokes about Air Bud. Right? It's, it's my dog's birthday. I love it, dude. Yeah. Hey, I, I, happy I, I, birthday! Extra sentimental value to dogs. <laughs> oh man, <laughs> one person. This is the last question we got for you. One person that you could sit down to, have dinner with. You could ask any questions to. They got to answer them. Who would it be? Alive or dead? Yep, dead or alive. Damn. I didn't put that on the fucking notes. No, that's... <laughs> ooh. I always said Jim Morrison of the Doors. Wow. I thought that his life, his music, his poetry, his uh, his interest in philosophy and things that like were so beyond music and like him being the figure that he was, it's, it's a very uncanny answer, but like... I would love to hear like what that time was like. That that, that, that late your sixties, your, yeah. your late sixties. Yeah. <laughs> He's one of the first of the twenty seven club. Like, oh, I was just gonna say, yeah, yeah. twenty seven club. Yeah, crazy. Yeah, that's that that club on, is freaky. And yeah. and on and on the spot, I love that answer. Yeah, right out. That was great. Jim Morrison. What do you guys got? Ah, uh, people ask us all the time. We'll we'll, we'll tell you off camera. <laughs> we'll tell you off camera. <laughs> no, no, yeah, yeah, yeah. Because yeah. you know, the, it, 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 yeah, 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 it goes. We, then I start making my own rules because I gave answers already, and then Franco gets mad at me because I make my own rules. So and then we'll Mario, t- and then Mario picks somebody different. I'm like, <laughs> <laughs> but Anthony, 
Appreciate you, bro. Guys, Thanks for coming yeah, on. Dude. It's been long overdue. Yeah, Seriously, absolutely. Long time, time crew. I That's appreciate it, man. you guys That's having it. me on. Puccio from Nets Daily. Don't forget to check out his new podcast when it drops. We're the Oven Podcast. Follow us. Share the show. Spank that subscribe button. And don't forget, there's always an open seat for you at the oven. Yes, sir. Keep it cooking in the oven. The oven. The, the, the oven. Yep, yep, yep. The oven. The oven. The oven. The oven. The oven. The oven. The oven.